Hello. Today I wanted to show you how to take a graph of a tangent function and write an equation from it. So, as you can see, I've uh, already created a graph of a tangent function, but uh, I have hidden from you what its uh, true function is, and we need to uh, try to come up with that. And so, uh, what we're going to do is uh, eventually come up with an equation in this form, where we put an amplitude and a frequency and a phase shift of some sort and a vertical shift of some sort into it. Uh, but how do we find those things and so forth? So, to, uh, uh, to do this, we really need to have a fundamental grasp of what the uh, basic tangent graph looks like. And so, here is uh, the basic graph for tangent of graph uh, or for tangent of x on a, a scale with degrees, and uh, you can see that it um, goes up, has an asymptote at 90 degrees, and comes back up, and it has an asymptote at 270, and comes back up, and so forth. Um, its cycle is actually a little smaller than a sine or a cosine curve. Uh, it does its entire um, pattern every 180 degrees. In fact, here I've, I've highlighted that. You can see that it does its up, its asymptote, and back up again, and that pattern repeats over and over and over again. While uh, this is showing a second, I want to emphasize that uh, at 45 degrees, notice that the tangent function is exactly 1 in height, and 45 degrees short of the end, 135 degrees, it's down 1. That is a uh, we'll see later on, um, related to the amplitude of the tangent function. So, if uh, we're going to try to um, come up with an equation for our tangent function, um, we really need to find these kind of pivotal points where the graph turns. So, if we go back to this one, it uh, seems to have one of those turning points here, and here, and here, and uh, let me just highlight one particular cycle of the tangent graph, beginning at this turning point, going up, and here's an asymptote, and then coming back up and ending at this particular turning point. So, if we uh, wanted to come up with an equation for that, um, first of all, at what height do these turning points occur? Uh, that looks like maybe at x equals 10 not x, excuse me, x equals 10, at y equals 10, yeah, there's a, a, um, a center line, if you will, and so that is the vertical shift, and so in our equation, we could uh, replace d with 10, we know what that is now, and uh, um, another thing that uh, we can look for now uh, is the amplitude. Uh, last time, let me draw in a little asymptote at three, and uh, here's the beginning, and here is the asymptote. In our basic graph, this is at zero degrees, and the asymptote is at 90, and halfway between them was that uh, point that I pointed out about uh, one. I can show you that quick, 45 degrees was one. So, on uh, this particular graph, that uh, halfway point here, if we look at how tall it is, that appears to be up an additional five units from the center line. And if I go to kind of where 135 degrees used to be, um, halfway between the asymptote and this, uh, if I go down five degrees, I get to the uh, tangent function again. Um, and so that five is the amplitude of tangent. I think that's one of the hardest of the things to try to find. Um, and so I wanted to make sure I pointed that out to you. So. Now we can put in here um, a 5 for a tangent amplitude. And uh, if we go back to our basic graph, if I were to uh, uh, change that to have um, an amplitude of 5 or an amplitude of 1 half, that shows it a little bit better. Um, an amplitude of one half now instead of five. You can see that at this 45 point, it's only one half high. If I change it to um, an amplitude of one fourth, it's uh, 
only a fourth of the way up high now. And so that's what amplitude does for tangents. Now, back to uh, our function. We have figured out most of what we need here. Uh, we still need to figure out what the frequency is and what the phase shift is. The phase shift isn't too difficult. That's just the x-coordinate where one of my tangent graphs begins. And so um, I chose to do that here, uh, start at 1. And so I'll put my phase shift in as a 1. I do need to uh, flip the sign, however. If I move in the positive direction one unit, then that means I need to put a minus 1 in here. Um, there's more than one starting point that we could have used, but that's uh, what uh, I chose to do for this particular graph. And uh, the final piece of this is what's the frequency of this particular graph. Frequency is uh, not something you can just eyeball on the graph, um, but uh, we can calculate frequency. Frequency um, is the natural period of the uh, tangent function divided by the period of this particular tangent function. So uh, we have a little freedom. We could write this in radian mode or we could write this in degree mode. Um, GeoGebra naturally works in radians and so I'm going to try to write that in radian mode. So our basic graph um, for tangent, uh, it has a normal period of 180 degrees and that would be uh, pi radians not sure how to get in a pi symbol, so I'm just going to cheat and write pi. Um, and then the period of this particular function, that's the distance from a center to a center, or from an asymptote to another asymptote, um, that's 4. And so pi over 4, that should be our um, formula to figure out what the frequency is. And in radian mode, it's actually kind of convenient. We don't really have to simplify that anymore. That just is the frequency. And so if we type in over here, instead of b, um, I can find the pi symbol. I think it's, do I have to make this a little bigger? Probably. Yeah, there's a few more options. There's pi. Um, looks like the Apple GP is what I should have pressed. Let's try that. Perfect. So there is a formula um, that should produce um, this particular function. So I'm going to uh, turn it off and uh, turn off some of these other things and we'll type it in and we'll see if um, it really does line up where we said it would. So 5 times tangent of pi over 4 and then in parentheses, x minus 1, and a plus 10. And yep, that's right where we thought it should be. So um, I'll turn that one off and just show you that uh, another possible answer is if we do tangent of pi over 4 and x, instead of x minus 1, maybe we choose this starting point of x minus 5 and a closing parenthesis and a plus 10. And notice that is the same graph as well. Just kind of reminding you that when you write an equation from a graph, there's actually many correct answers and correct ways to do it. So I hope that helps you in figuring out how to draw on a tangent. Thanks for listening. Bye.